Good morning and welcome back to the 120s. Today we are doing some more black and white paper reversal, but this time we're going to do it with flash. Okay, so if you guys have been following my journey with black and white paper reversal, you will know that I've been through various stages with it and we've got some good results. One of the ongoing issues, especially with my large portrait box camera, uh, was the long exposure times. The exposure times on there with the, the setup that I'm using with the combination of paper and chemicals and the, the portrait box itself. Then we were looking at exposure times even outside of like seven to eight seconds, which is very difficult for most people to stand still that long. So I started to look into using flash. Um, I did test it. Uh, and found out that I had nowhere near enough flash power in my arsenal. So, since getting back from Canada, I have been amassing a, uh, a war chest of flash equipment. I have, this is a Boeing's Esprit 1000DX. I have three of them, and I have a Boeing's 500, and I have a Hyundai 400 watt second flash. So I should now have enough flash power to make this work. I am taking photos of myself today uh, because I'm at home on my own. And to be honest with you, this is gonna be a bit trial and error. This is gonna be a bit suck and see. So I'm taking photos of me on the Caronte 4x5 with the Minutero 2.0. Uh, because that is the quickest way I can turn this around and the fastest way I can do all this testing. I am going to use a 1000 watt light as a key with a soft box. Um, and I'm then going to use another 1000 watt light with a grid as uh, an edge light, as a rim light. Uh, no fill at the moment. Very quickly explain to you the focusing system that I have in place. I have the posing stand set up. I have then measured the distance from the back of my head where the posing stand is going to be resting to my eyes. I think I measured it accurately and I got about 19 centimetres from the uh, back of my head to my eye. Uh, I have then uh, measured 11 to 30 here and I've put just a little bit of tape. That is what I'm going to focus on and then I'm going to remove this and it will just leave this. I'm going to keep that in place. Then I'm going to set everything up, get everything ready, sit down, place my head against there, fire the flash. Uh, and then develop it and see what we got. Has there ever been a simpler photographic shoot? I think not. Right, let's get set up. That is perfect sharpness. Right, now we can remove the... So from this point on, the camera and the posing stand need to not move. He says, kicking the camera straight away. So the lens we are using today is the Ross of London Teleross. So it's a 5.5, five, so we'll call it a 5.6. Okay, um, next we need to load a sheet, so let's do that. Last night I prepped uh, seven sheets. Oh, you knobbed, I've just done it again. I've just done exactly what I did last time, and that is, I've, I've got to set this all up again. I focused without the spacer, you absolute tool. Right, start again. Right, in goes the spacer. Right, load of sheet, that's what we were doing. We're in. Seal the box again, make sure everything is like tight. And let's just see if this will go in. On this new Caronte, the Minotero fits in using the existing springs. No need to remove the back and use the graph lock attachments. Right then, we're sort of ready. So next job to do, so let's put the lens cap, just a bit tube, over the front of the camera. Hang on. So I just want to hang it loosely there. Strong enough to stay on. Here we go. Dark slide out. Lens cap is still on. Okay, lens cap off. Sit down. Three, two, one. Lens cap back on. And let's see what we got. I won't bore you with this whole process. I've been through it before on the channel. You can see the Minotaur in action in detail if you click the video to the top right of the screen now. Essentially, it's developer to completion, wash, bleach, wash, clarify, wash, then we open it up and re-expose, then develop again in daylight. So let's skip to that bit. Let's see what we've got. So 
so my framing's wrong. But overall, not too bad. Right, so I need to come up and left, basically. So this is good. This is progress. So I've cranked this one up by a stop. A bit more than a stop and a half. This one we're keeping on the same power. Um, but I've, I've turned it a little bit, so I've feathered it a little bit, so it's not quite so direct on my face. Yeah, we're good to go. So dark slide out, lens cap off, sit down, position, one, two, three, and lens cap back on again. Dark slide back in, and we'll start developing again. Right then, uh, I think what needs to happen now is I'm gonna take the grids off both of these lights and then I'm gonna turn them down by a stop. So the grids obviously do eat up light, but it means that you get a very direct uh, light that doesn't kind of creep anywhere else. But I don't think that's doing us many favors here. Okay, so grids removed. This one turned down a little bit. This one I'm gonna turn down a little bit as well. Let's try and control a bit of this. It's starting to get a bit brighter outside, so I'm just gonna try and control that light coming in from there. So, dark slide out. Uh, lens cap off. Three, two, one. Lens cap back on. Lights off. Develop again. Right then, off we go again. This one's ready to come out. Here we go. Oh wow, so that, um, <laughs> rim light is a bit aggressive now, eh? Oops. Okay. Then turn that down significantly. But otherwise, the removal of the uh, the grid on on here. This has really worked. This is good. Uh, what's this? We've got this kind of almost a. Hopefully that will develop out. It could be a. How weird! I don't know what that is. This is some kind of artifact from this. I need to get rid of this. Now this is interesting. So there's a bit of a ghosting image there, which I think is coming from, so I'm obviously getting some exposure from the daylight outside. Hmm. So I need to close those curtains basically, because it's, uh, we are exposing. Interesting. Right then, we're going dark in the rest of the room. I've closed over those uh, curtains. So we're now fully dark. And let's fire everything up again. Lens cap off. Three, two, one. So to give you an idea of turnaround time, I have now been doing this for two hours and this is my fifth sheet, which is not bad going, really. I could probably go a bit quicker. Right then, moment of truth. Is this the one? In goes the Ansco. That's dark. Too dark. Right then, it's now the evening. Um, since I last saw you, I have put all of this kit away and got all of this kit back out again. This is where we're set up now. So camera here. Um, this is my focusing device. Got one light set up here. This is actually crazy close. So this is basically gonna be a face shot. Uh, so we'll do one of these and see how we get on. Let us begin. So without the daylight coming through the window, I now have to use a flashlight to re-expose. And now for the developer.
I'm enjoying how this is developing. Do you like my hat? Well, that looks pretty cool. Pretty happy with that. I'll uh, take you through the rest of the process and uh, start drying it and take a really good look at it and see exactly how close we got with the focus and stuff. But it looks pretty good. Happy. Okay, let us discuss our findings. Good news, we're back up and running with the black and white paper reversal. And that's great news. I'm really getting back into it. Lots of that coming. Bad news. Flash with black and white paper reversal is tricky. So we got one decent exposure. Uh, and that was with a 1000 watt flash head firing about three feet from my face. I was using a softbox which was double diffused, that kind of knee worth thing. So it's possible we could reduce that. We could back off on the diffusion a little bit. We might get a stop back. But either way, if we are gonna use flash to light the subjects for the large box camera, I'm probably gonna to need to use two. I may even have to try and squeeze two into the same modifier. It's gonna be complicated. I need so much power that I might not be able to, to maintain the kind of level of creativity that I would want. Also, firing those 1000 watt flash heads at full pelt over and over, I'm bound to blow one of those flash tubes uh, at some point. So that's the bad news. There's another bit of good news, uh, which I am taking from this image. So on reflection, and I kind of got there while I was, while I was shooting, uh, that mass of overexposure on the, whatever side of my face this is, is from the light coming through the curtains. And that tells us two things. So the timing, so it was lens cap off, sit down, pose, flash, get up, lens cap back on again. So we're looking at maybe five seconds, maybe six seconds of sunlight creeping through a curtain to do that kind of damage exposure wise. Now let's bear in mind that back in December, this image needed eight seconds of exposure. And now we're getting this from four or five seconds of exposure through a small crack in the curtains. And that tells me that the, the elements of sunlight that we need are much stronger now. Now this is not news. This is not, oh, a big discovery, revelation. It's well known there is more UV around in the summer than there is in the winter. Uh, sunlight is stronger, uh, but this is proof that that is the case. So bad news though on that is I'm gonna have to work out all my exposure times again. But it does mean that I should be getting more realistic exposure times outside at this time of year than I was getting back in December. So that's potentially good news. It could potentially mean that we don't need the flash after all. There's a lot for me now to think about moving forwards. The goal is to get the big box camera out and to start doing a series of portraits with that big box camera. I think potentially the only thing to do is to get it out and start shooting and see where we end up with it. Maybe it's some combination of, of daylight and flash. Although, as you saw with this one, we start to get ghosting. Although, you know, I was moving around a lot. Um, there's no doubt that trying to take photos of myself with this process makes things more complicated. And so I should be pretty happy that I got anything at all. Yeah. Anyway, long story short, we're back in business with a black and white paper reversal. That is what's going to be coming up next on the channel. More of that. I think I may continue with the Minutero a little bit longer. I might try and do some more self-portraits or maybe even just do some more tests on the kids until I can get this exposure time absolutely nailed on, especially out in the daylight. I want to see what the difference is between what I was getting before and what I'm getting now. There is also the possibility of using daylight plus artificial light. Um, but constant sources rather than flash. The problem, as I say, with flash is that you, there is the potential for getting ghosting. So in other words, uh, 
with somebody sitting as, even as still as they can will have one single pop of the flash uh, over the course of a two or three second exposure and the two or three second exposure might have a tiny bit of movement in it whereas the flash will be perfectly still and therefore we get this kind of still image with some some artifacts around it so there's lots of complications lots of things that we can try more of that coming up on the channel loads of other stuff coming up on the channel apologies there was a little bit of a gap in programming there I had a little bit of a busy time when i got back from canada getting myself sorted and getting uh, some more work lined up so that uh, i can afford to continue doing all this experimentation but we're back in business now lots of stuff coming up we've got some new films we've got some uh, camera tests uh, more black and white paper reversal more large format some interesting kit coming out of italy at the moment watch out for that uh, so yeah loads of stuff if you're not currently subscribed please do subscribe thank you for coming along for this journey like i say back in business with the black and white paper reversal i do have a question that i want help from you with it all to do with that big portrait box camera and how I can shoot multiple sheets. Uh, but I'm going to post that in another video. I'm going to ask for your help. All right. Watch out for that one. See you next time. Thanks a lot. Bye.